Hello. So glad that you could be here with us today. You know, the world around us continues to change, but uh, God remains the same. So we're grateful for that. I hope these uh, videos through the week have been helpful and useful to you. I see uh, your uh, likes and comments and shares on Facebook. Don't be afraid to share those around to other people so that they can be a help uh, to your friends and neighbors and family too. Uh, and as far as I know, um, we're all healthy within our church uh, congregation still. So we are certainly grateful for, for that. Um, since it's Sunday, we are going to look at the passage of scripture that was scheduled uh, for today, and that's John 15. Uh, we're going to look at John 15, 1 through about verse 8. Now, I've spent uh, some time with this passage this week, and I think that it really boils down to a very simple message. Uh, stay connected to Jesus and bear fruit like he did. Stay connected to Jesus and bear fruit like he did. You know, that's uh, an important message all the time, um, but it's an important message, especially important message now, because I think that with the, you know, change in routine and all the things that are uh, happening, one of the first things that we can leave to the side is time spent with Jesus. And I think that it's very important, especially now, to prioritize that time maintaining your connection to Jesus. Because listen to what Jesus says in uh, John 15. John 15 verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If anyone remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus says that we relate to him the way that branches relate to a vine. Think about that. A, a branch needs a vine, right? It can't grow on its own. It can't make fruit on its own. Um, however, when it is connected to the vine, and when it draws life and energy and, and nourishment from the vine, it will prosper. Same with us. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing of lasting spiritual value. Apart from him, our spiritual life withers. But when we are in relationship with him, he actually dwells in us, giving us life and vitality uh, and, and energy. When we do that, when we uh, draw from him the energy that he gives us, then we too prosper. And, and not only do we prosper, we prosper for the benefit of others, right? We bear fruit that is helpful to them. Now, a lot of people have um, speculated what that fruit exactly is. Uh, when we are connected to Jesus, what exactly is this fruit? Uh, some people will say it's um, obedience that comes from faith. Some people will say that it's evangelistic efforts. Uh, some people will say it's just, you know, straight out good deeds. And others will say it's character related, right? Like the fruit of the spirit. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and, and, and self-control. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure um, that it's any one of those things. More than likely, it's all of them. And so I like to think in terms of bearing fruit like Jesus did, right? We bear fruit that reflects uh, Jesus from whom we draw life. And that works with our metaphor, doesn't it? You know, if you see a grapevine in season, you expect to see grapes, if you see an apple tree, you expect to see apples. If you see a follower of Jesus, well, then you would expect to see them doing and, and act, doing things and acting like Jesus himself would. And if there's no fruit or if there's rotten fruit, then it really should cause us to pause and say, well, is that person really connected to Jesus? Because a branch connected to the vine should bear fruit that is consistent with the vine, with Jesus. And according to verse 8, when we do uh, stay connected to Jesus and bear fruit like he does, it brings glory to God and it confirms that we are indeed uh, Jesus' disciples. So that's the big idea today. Uh, stay connected to Jesus and, and bear fruit like he did. How do we do that? First, 
uh, stay connected. You know, find time in the midst of this busy upheaval uh, time of life. Find time to nurture your relationship with God. You know, uh, prayer, reading your Bible, these videos, going for walks uh, with the Lord. You know, these are all very important and helpful things. Whatever, um, whatever you can do to nurture your relationship with God, find ways to draw life from him the same way that, that a branch draws life from the vine. Second, uh, bearing fruit, let that life that Jesus gives you overflow from your life to others as Christ-like fruit. You know, Jesus goes so far as to say in verse 7, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, which means that our desires will be shaped by God's will rather than our own. If you remain in me and in my words, ask whatever you wish. And it will be granted to you. Can you imagine if we all started to pray, Lord, help us to be your hands and feet to people who have need right now? You know, apart from him, Jesus says we can do nothing, but in relationship with him, we can do more than we could possibly imagine in his strength. Not only are we in him, but he is in us. So stay close to Jesus and bear fruit like he did. Now, um, there's one more verse that I want us to, or one more thought that I want us to consider. um, Because right off the bat in this passage, in in verse 2, Jesus says uh, first that the Father cuts off every branch that does not bear fruit. And two, he cuts back the branches that do bear fruit in order that they will bear even more fruit. I wonder if we are in a pruning time right now. I wonder if God is cutting back from our lives excess baggage and things that we don't need that really tangle us up and keep us from a true close relationship with him. I wonder if we're going to look back on this time and say, God knew what he was doing. He was simply pruning away the dead wood that would allow us now to uh, focus on what's most important and to bear fruit that has lasting, um, lasting value. We can certainly pray to that end. You know, with all of the uh, social distancing that has been going on, there is uh, another uh, term that's been getting a lot of airplay, and and that's staying connected, right? If you do a Google search, you will find hundreds of ways to stay connected to family and friends, and and, and, and that's very important. I I do encourage you to stay connected to family and friends, and you know what? After you've watched this video, why don't you pick up the phone and call somebody from the church, check in with them, encourage them, um, and see how they are doing. But beyond that, there is one other person that I would encourage you to connect with, and, and that's Jesus. Stay connected to him and bear fruit like he did. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you do not leave us alone, but you are with us. You dwell within us to give us life and to give us um, joy and peace and patience. Lord, I pray that we would be able to embrace that, to embrace the gifts that you give us, and that we would be able to then um, extend those gifts to others, uh, living with joy and patience and and kindness and goodness. Lord, I pray that that we would embrace the pruning that you are doing, um, that we would get rid of the the, the useless accretions that build up on our life, uh, so that we would be streamlined and, and focused on you. Lord, we, we pray too for the ongoing uh, COVID-19 virus uh, and, and the situation around it. Lord, we pray that you would step in and, and, and stop it. We pray that you would um, give scientists and, and, and doctors wisdom to find the vaccine. 
we pray that you would be with people who are out there right now um, doing hard and important work, you know, in, in, in grocery stores, in medical centers, um, driving buses, and, you know, all these things that we so often take for granted. Lord, protect the vulnerable, please. And we pray, Lord, that you would draw us all nearer to you in the midst of it. Give us great joy and satisfaction in staying connected with you. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, stay safe. Um, Trust in God. And remember, prayer and precaution, not panic.